Okay, we are back and it's time for us to create our new API in the results presenter. So what is the new initializer? Well, it captures the properties, user answers, correct answers, and scorer. Like this? Yeah. Okay. And it needs to be escaping. Fantastic. So let's have a look at the test now. The result presenter test. Okay, so the first one, we are creating a results presenter. Looks like we can change this to the new API. Yes. Which is user answers, and it can be empty. Mm -hmm. The correct answers, that is also empty. And the scorer, that can be, well, anything. Yes. Okay, it's passing. Great. But why don't we hide those details from this test? Uh, yeah, we should definitely create a factory method there. Can be make SUT? Yeah. Just like the property here. Uh, SUT stands for system under test. Mm -hmm. So let's create this method at the bottom here. So private function, and it should return a results presenter. Yeah. Let's run the test again. Very nice. Before we commit, I think we can even inline the make SUT. Okay, like this? Yeah. Okay, so let's commit this. Migrated the title test to the new API. Yeah. Okay, next. How can I make this test use the new API now? So this will be make SUT with... User answers. User answers. And we're going to pass the answers here. So I'm going to call this user answers now. Uh, we don't need to pass questions anymore. Mm -hmm. But we need to pass the correct answers. And we need to pass a scorer. Right. And in this case, we want it to return one. Mm -hmm. Score one. That's fine. Yeah. Something like this. I like that. Exactly. Okay. Now we need to... Add the user answers, correct answers, and a score to our make SCT. Right. We can use default parameters not to break the O tests. Yeah. So this is a results presenter dot answers. Very nice. So we use a type alias there. Yes. Correct answers. It's also the same type. Yes. And the score is an int. Right. And we just need to pass this to the initializer. Mm -hmm. And the scorer, we just return the score now. Exactly. Let's see. We need to give a default value in the score. Zero. Yep, that should do it. And we can even break down the parameters of the results presenter format it nicely. Like this? Yeah. Okay. Still have an error here. Oh, of course, we need to make the dictionary now be an array of tuples. That's an easy one. Look how the compiler helps us here. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, it's passing, so... Right, so we can commit now. We want all the tests passing throughout this process. So let's commit. Migrated the summary test to new APIs. Yes. Great. Next one, that should be an easy one. It's empty answers, and we don't need score. Yeah. Awesome. Migrated the empty presentable answers tests to new APIs. Mm -hmm. Next one. So let's call this now user answers. Yeah. Let's convert it to tuples. Okay, so we don't need a result anymore. And we need to create this using the make SUT. Yes. Very straightforward process here. Do we need a score? No, we don't. Okay. Run the test. That should do it. Fantastic. Migrated the wrong single answer test to new APIs. Okay. Next one. Same thing here. user answers, correct answers, and we don't need a score. Let's run this test. 
It's passing. Another one bites the dust. Okay. Last one. So this is the one that tests for order. And this is the one that saved us from the bug in the previous episode. Yeah, keyword, saved. <laughs> so this is an important one. It's important because imagine if we didn't have tests here, the only way to, to find that would be only if we were very observant when we were running the app. You would still see like two elements at the end of the result, but exactly. you might miss that they are in the wrong order. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, let's run the test. If it passes, we are done here. Yeah, let's run everything. So what is the problem here? Maybe we got the wrong setup. The multiple answer question is the Q2. And single answer question is the Q1. Right. Okay. In the previous test, the order for the single answer was here by using this order question. Mm. Because the dictionary was not dictating order. Yeah, it was yeah. the order questions. Okay, so we just need to invert the positions here. Because now we don't have dictionaries, we don't have order problems. But I still want to have this test here. Yeah. Just in case. Awesome. That's it. Okay, let's commit. Migrate the order test to new API. And I saw a small code rearrangement we can do. These two properties for the single answer and the multi answer, we can move them to the helper area and we can make them private as well. Okay. And if someone is interested, they can just jump to definition here. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. You open the file, you'll see the tests, you'll see the behavior expected. And if you care about the helpers, you can find it right here. Exactly. Let's commit. Organized test code. Great. We are done with the results presenter. Perfect. So we want to get rid of this initializer. And who creates the presenter? Let's have a look here. Here, creates the factory. That's the next point. Because if you can get rid of this old API, we can get rid of this link. And that's what we want. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's go to the factory. iOS view controller factory. And where do we create the results presenter? Right here. Yeah. Okay. Why don't we move this code here mm -hmm. to the factory now? And then we potentially can get rid of this initializer. Absolutely. Yeah. And I like that because it's just one level above uh, from where it is being created. Yeah. Let's try it out. Okay. So the new API we are going to call is the user answers, correct answers and scorer. Mm -hmm. The user answers is now this mapping. Yeah. The correct answer is this mapping. The scorer is disclosure. Right. That should do it. Let me run this and let's see what happens. Yeah, it passes the test. Let's commit. Okay, updated the factory implementation to use new results presenter API. Yeah. Which means, can we get rid of this initializer now? Yeah, I think so. Let's make this private and let's see if anyone else references this. Oh, someone references this initializer. And it is the factory tests. Oh, okay. Because the factory lives in the main module. So it's pretty much testing mm -hmm. these things in integration, which right. is what we want to make sure that they work properly when combined. Yes. Okay, so can we migrate this right now? Right, so since this initializer is only referenced in the test target, why don't we copy that? actually cut it from the results presenter and create an extension in the test target. Okay, so if I cut this into the factory test as a private extension. Yeah. Okay. Tomato is done, should we finish this quickly? Yeah, 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 for sure. But here we don't have the notion of self for these properties, but we can use the initializer. Right, and this can be a convenience initializer. Mm -hmm. Okay, that would work. Yeah. Great. Let's see if that works. 
If it works, we commit. It does. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So we were moved finally from the result presenter to dependency on the result type. Yeah. Okay. So removed the results presenter deprecated initializer, which means we can remove this link now. Yes. Excellent. So we are moving from a higher level to a lower level module until we can get rid of it. Yeah. Fantastic. See you next time. Bye, y'all.